which there are 18 others as well. So everyone's favourite is in the mix. Um, if we've got no further questions or comments, if I can um, thank Shane for the presentation and move the, the contents of that to noted, if that's agreed. And then if we can move on to item 5, which is Mersey Parish Service Provision and the Irish representative. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of the report is, is to update members really on the current service provision of Mersey Parish and provide a summary of the reasons why we've lost service recently. Um, the background and key issues elements of the report pro provides a summary of the circumstances which led to uh, an unfortunate loss of service on Thursday, the 13th of October 2016, where we've been without an operating vessel since. In section 3.9, just to just summarise, the options available really to officers in, in making some difficult decisions around this loss of service, around availability of vessels, with a real focus around an understanding that uh, the, the Wirral Slab Track Works plan for early 2017 need to have a, a, a resilient and reliant ferry services should be uh, foremost in our minds and some difficult decisions taken. So in effect, 3.10 is the decision that officers took and, and, and it's to, to try and explain to members an understanding around why that happened. There was an option to bring the snow drop back into service sooner rather than what she's currently planned. But in doing so, it brings the reliability of that vessel into question a real risk around those slab track works, hence the reason why we've got this unprecedented and very frustrating loss of service we suffer at the moment, but one that we feel is the right decision in the long term. And the risks and so on, and other implications associated with that are summarised in the report, but what it brings to strength and really in summarising in section 3.13 is, is operating the service with vessels that are nearly 60 years old. Is, is a risk, you know, a real risk that we're facing at the moment, and one that we ought to close out with the endorsement of the recent strategy that the, the members of all are all aware of. I'm happy to take any questions on that basis. Thanks, Gary. We've got Captain Matt Tony. Thanks, Joe. <coughs> Thanks, Gary, for uh, comprehensive updates on what's going on, because none of us wants to see what's happened, but no offence at all was taken us. And uh, let's be fair about it. Uh, both vessels are getting there in the 60. I mean, at one time, some of us were really looking forward to retirement at 60, but now the government have put the retirement up a bit further, so, <coughs> but unfortunately, this doesn't work with the vessels. There's only one good thing about it, though. I mean, we haven't seen some excellent service from these vessels, and we have kept them on the river as long as possible. But, you know, when you look at our 20 year ferry strategy, we're looking at new vessels. Um, you know, this is what I think we must be looking at now, because what's to come in the future? You know, they've served the purpose, they should be put out to pasture or put into dry dock and knocked out in, in reverence, but we need to look forward to see what the new vessels are going to look like. And once we start getting uh, some tenders back from naval architects, we'll be able to see what we want and what, uh, what we can put on the river for future, for our future generations. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. 
open for that, for that response. But, uh, well, to, to be fair, one of the things we, we recognise and one of the reasons why we've made the decision as officers, the reliability of the Ferries has been, and the performance, has been 90, 98% plus for year on year. It's, it's unprecedented what we see at the moment. It's a difficult decision to make. Uh, but we're, we're very confident with the work that's undergoing and the decisions we've made and the investments the organisation continues to make in the ferries that we'll bounce back very strong next year. We're already working with the group Travel Trade behind the scenes to build a leisure business back up. And from a commuter perspective, we're, we're, we're confident as well that we're providing a reliable and resilient service here in January that we're going to grow that commuter patronage back. So confidence across the, the decisions we've made will be a difficult, we'll get that return. And, and I'll ask people to remember as well that the ferries business has faced times like this in the past associated with, with, with the, the relevant interventions and clearly they're all still subject to, to formal decisions and funding being, being available. But the, the, the appointment of the naval architect is, is expected by the end of this year, <coughs> at which point they'll be working towards a new vessel on the river by 2020, 2021. Uh, and that, the, the, the vision would be that that new, that new vessel would pick up the majority of the service based around it. The second vessel, which we've already identified as being Snowdrop, that would be retained for service for the remaining 10 years, is the one that's undergoing the major engine service at this point in time, and that's why that investment is being made. But at that stage, you clearly you would review a strategy every two to three years for evidence of this nature that comes out. It's, op it's officers' understanding that, and is that that Snowdrop can last a third to 15 to 20 years with the right interventions as long as not as long as it is supported by that new vessel so it is not taking up service on a daily basis but is actually brought out just for occasional use perhaps for example the Manchester ship and all that. Thanks Scott Gary. Thanks. Thanks Chair. Thanks Gary. Um, yeah, well, can I start off by saying obviously nobody expects these uh, things to come along one after another and can cause the well, I do remember when in, in the past when we discussed ferries and what bought in ferries that I suggested that a ferry should be kept whilst it's in, in dock, used if you can make money with it, but also kept up to standard in case of any of this, this kind of thing that happened. Obviously that didn't happen and of course we've been caught into this, into this stage. Um, Ron picked up part of the, the, the question that you answered that about um, you know, a strategy going forward because there is a timeline now between before we get these new vessels and you know keeping these old ones. Is there not m merit in having that second vessel up to standard now, uh, so that if an engine breaks down, if a ferry hits the dock and damages its rudder, we have a vessel that come back in because it is onus upon ourselves as Mercy Travel to keep this patronage and service going. And I think if we'd have done that and kept the vessel up to standard, then we wouldn't have been in the position we are. Uh, I think the potential is yes, uh, and of course that's something that you, would, you could, as an organisation, we could, could consider. The reality of it is, and that, that's what the, the way the strategy looked to do, operational demand for the ferries means in the main we, we are able to provide service. Availability of those vessels. And when we 
absolute no quantity of, of repairs before you could bring it back into service. And with that, when there's a relative unknown level of cost to My worry, Gary, is, is um, that we are waiting for these new vessels to show that they're coming on our strategies in place. My worry is if something goes wrong with the, the vessel that we've got, and we're unable to give any uh, service whatsoever. stage that we're at now is that yes, uh, CA approved the full business case on the 21st of October. We're also in a position to uh, submit a planning application uh, or Network Rail colleagues were able to submit a planning application to Central Council on that same day. Uh, so what I have here are a number of slides that were um, submitted as part of that planning application. Um, the application is still being validated at the current stage and will Uh, just to put it into context, this is where Bogon North is. Uh, it's the, the uh, junction where the yellow road goes over the railway line in the middle of that thick red circle. You'll see down here, this is the existing Bogon station. Um, this is the M58 motorway, and just there to the right of the proposed site, that's junction one, um, which is the, the access which is present only heads up towards Skelmsdale.
this is the public area. They would go in there, there's a ticket office, a passenger toilet there, and then out through the side door up onto the station. The middle part of the box is the ticket office and the cash dump area and the staff messing area. And then at the back end, we've got a number of storerooms for the signaling communications and all the other bits and pieces that go into the network mail need uh, in operating on the rail line. On this one again, you'll see here, access coming up onto school lane, so we've got a step access there, and using the existing footway um, and the, the cycle lane that I mentioned earlier, we've got a, a step free access into the station for anyone coming from the existing houses through the school lane bridge and getting into the station. That's a plan there. Um, on the right hand side of the plan is the route out to Ormskirk, and on the left hand side, the route back into Liverpool. Uh, the car park there with the station building in the top left hand and the, the housing at this bottom end, this is the proposed housing layout that Chris um, and are now developing. Um, they have their planning, detailed planning permission at present, um, and we're working with them on a regular basis um, just so that we can make sure that there aren't any anomalies when we bring the two projects together. Uh, some cross sections there. The, the railway line is actually in a cutting at this location. Um, Getting access to the Ormskirk down platform by going across the footbridge down onto the platform. One of the uh, interesting aspects of working with Network Rail is that their basic standard these days is to allow for trains with their overhead wires. On this particular section of the Ormskirk branch, our trains run on the third rail system, which is down at ground level. We've also got School Lane Bridge alongside, which is a, a determinant on the height of the trains, and also the old days lane bridge just side of that. So we've actually worked quite hard with Network Rail to make sure that we can bring that uh, footbridge span down as low as we possibly can because we know that the train's going through the station in this particular location will still be running on, on the third rail system. That has actually allowed us to reduce the, the intrusion of the, the, the footbridge and, and the lift towers in that particular area and we've also got essentially a, a, a flat span on the station Tunnel image here, um, where you can see in relation to the existing properties that are then located on, on Mersey Avenue. We have had a number of meetings with uh, the, the residents of Mersey Avenue, and a number of, of them have been in touch with us on an individual basis. We've um, modified the design uh, so that we um, can try and allay some of their fears. And what we've looked at is a solid fence line along the back of the platform so that the passengers are. So a, a high level solid uh, fence down the side of the footbridge so that again as a possible footbridge they are to get into the back gardens and the back rooms of the house. 
set up um, is a communications group which is representatives of ourselves, Venezuela, Network Man, and Central Council. Um, and that is part of the um, evidence that we have uh, the, the existing um, community involvement, uh, which I accept would be, would be a lot more. Um, but that has uh, gone forward as, as part of the paperwork we submitted for the funding application. Uh, the, the intention, obviously, uh, assuming that this goes through, the original debrief occurred, and the request was to lower, lower the structure itself bridge, that took several months to work through network rails and departure, and therefore before you could go back and brief on that, you had to secure that with the rail industry, and that didn't actually delay the, the meeting for several months, which is a bit of a problem. Could I request as well that any future meetings were obviously make sure the fact should be so good, fully so good. to increase patronage on the train themselves. The, the changes to the carriages that will be laid on, the numbers of passengers, and in particular on the parking issues, parking issues that the suffer at the moment in the bus station and the neighbouring properties that have put up the people parking outside the station and so on and so forth. Is there any residential restrictions? Because what what generally happens at the door station is people travel from all to park at the door in order to get into the city centre. 
various other uh, major tick boxes that are the requirements of that new stations fund can be ticked without project. Um, yes, okay, the, the money that we, we've acquired through the combined authority should deliver that project, but again, if we can get some money from some other fund, why not? Have a good for it.
see this as, as important from a fastest comfort point of view, because obviously on the trains themselves, you want to be able to have uh, the, the trains maximised for carrying passengers, um, and obviously it's a lot cleaner and healthier environment to have the toilets up on the land where it comes into the, um, into the standard system. The other factor that we're looking at is, and this is a requirement of, of European legislation, is that wherever possible, you build platforms on a straight piece of track. And we do have that opportunity here at the Gold North that um, from, from about that area, that way, we're actually on a, a straight piece of track. So that, that also improves the, the access to get from platform to the train. Yeah, that answers the question. I just wanted to check again on the platform height.